Welcome back to another episode of Low Range. This time we're in South Australia, and isn't this a beautiful part of the world? We explored the Coorong National Park where Storm Boy was filmed. No, I wasn't in it. We take the ferry across to Kangaroo Island where Glenn managed to scare the local dolphin population. And we visit the absolutely stunning Eagle View four-wheel drive park where I attempt some of the most challenging low-ranging I've done to date. So sit back and come along for the ride. Mount Gambier, the second largest city in South Australia, a city which just happens to be located on the slopes of a volcano, a volcano that could erupt again at any time. So we've decided this would be a great place to start our trip from. Our cars are prepped, clean, packed, and we're looking a million bucks. And I, for one, is keen to leave what is known as the newer volcanic province one of us had other ideas. Ken I? Yeah, mate. What happened, mate? Oh, it's a long story, mate. I don't know. Have you got time? Yeah, I've got time. It goes like this. We're 95 k's out of Mount Gambia. Um, oh, the smoke stopped? Kind of, yeah. Well, that's after one fire extinguisher and about four bottles of water. Now, these things happen to Ken I? It started making a funny noise. That was the first thing. And then the noise got worse and worse and worse. Um, I pulled over and checked on it, and I saw all the oil coming out of the diff. And I was 40 k's from where I had to be, so I tried to limp it in. Then it made some really, really, really bad noises. Then the rear axle snapped, so I had no drive. Revs went through the roof, so I put it in four-wheel drive, and I got 100 metres down the road, and then the wheel nearly fell off and then it caught fire. I'm thinking, all I can think is this thing's gonna turn into a barbecue. I'm, all, all it's gonna be good for is putting a steak on top of it to cook it. Oh, can I? Don't cry. <laughs> oh, there she goes. Oh, just, just about made it. Finally got it on the tow truck, got it into Mount Gambia, into uh, Auto Care, and they were there at 11, 11.30 at night, letting us in. I know one thing for certain, you make us two look good. <laughs> All your cars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we, this is a nice little part of the world here. It is a nice shed, isn't yeah. it? No, no, I mean outside. So oh. if you don't mind, I'm going to call this a blackout. What does that mean? So, yep. You going? Yep. Where's he going? Mate, I'm coming too. Well, sorry, mate. Can I maybe get a ride with you, Glenno? Yeah, you were going to say that. Because. This isn't going. You're right, passenger. Don't touch any buttons. Don't touch anything. Tell me trailer. Don't talk. Not tell on the trailer. What? Get what your am stuff. I gonna sleep in? Get. I don't care. Get your stuff. I don't think I need any of that. I'll just get going with you. So from Mount Gambia, we're headed north to Coorong National Park. Next, it's on a ferry so we can get to Kangaroo Island where we'll do a bit of exploring. And then lastly, we'll make our way to Eagle View Four Wheel Drive Park for some more low ranging. It sort of appears that I lost a bet, doesn't it? But you know, Ken come uh, ran shotgun with me and I ended up with the camper trailer. Well, big fella, you win some and you lose some, mate. How's it like, Ken I feel sitting in the passenger seat? I'm quite enjoying it. I um, had a bit of a sleep on the road on the way out here, but now that we've hit the dirt, I'm wide awake and I'm ready. And I uh, snuck the trailer on the back of the car early this morning in the darkness and um, when I didn't realise that he was towing it for me. So I've got somewhere to sleep as well, so I'm happy. 
What about you, big fellow? How do you feel of your tow and this bloody trailer around? One day, mate. Do it for one day. Oh. Mate, this area that we're going in the Coorong is better known for the... Uh, a lot of people remember, remember the movie uh, Storm Boy. It was shot around this area as well. I remember Storm Boy very well. Yeah, driving down towards Coorong, it's a different look and feel to the rest of Australia that I've ever experienced. There was salt lakes everywhere and water bodies everywhere, um, but it was a beautiful area. I think there's about a couple of hundred lakes around this area, lots of little ones, clay pans and stuff like that. I reckon you make most of this stuff up, mate. <laughs> I do, but wasn't it convincing? And just like that, we're in remote country. We've well and truly left the city behind now. It's quite amazing what, um, when he pulled up at that salt flat, there's a lot of things that things leave behind, like tracks. Emu tracks, which are interesting because you have one foot and then, and then probably two metres later, there's a the next footprint and then another two metres, there's the next one. So that goes to show how fast they were moving and how far they actually travel between steps. It's crazy. They're monster things. Up close, you wouldn't want to get kicked by one. You wouldn't want to get kicked by the original emu in these parts, little fella. The Wadjabalak tribe from Western Victoria have a dreamtime story of a giant emu named Nindigal. She was very feared and she was said to have killed and eaten many people. Eventually, she was defeated, but from her feathers, the emu that we know today were created. Hey, um, that new diff that they sent over, was it complete? Did it have a centre and...? Now, Ken I got the phone call from, from Zach down at Auto Care and uh, let us know that the, the diff centre, um, Keno's diff, had a broken tooth on the crang wheel and the pinion. So All right. it's not that easy to get parts in Mount Gambier. OK, see ya. Got to get more parts overnight from Adelaide. They found more damage on this diff centre. Tooth missing off the crown wheel and the pinion. We're another day behind again. Um, so I had to uh, give Glenno the uh, good news that he was going to have to put up with me for at least another day. You'll have to tow the trailer now. I have to tow the trailer. And take him. Why am I going to take him? Because the deal was only one day. Oh, just kick me out, why don't Well, it's, I'll have him on Thursday. I feel, I, feel so, <laughs> I feel so wanted. <laughs> what is this button here doing, Glenn? That's, you know, that's you know why the... he's leaving. But um, one more day. Look, didn't worry me at all. It was pretty good, but you could see in his eyes that he was a bit upset. Uh, don't worry, little fella. Here at Low Range, we've got the perfect cure for feeling down. <laughs> OK, we're heading up a road we haven't been on before, Big Fire. This is tightening up a bit. Oh, yeah, we've got some dirt up in front here. I reckon we're going to have to go back down to Low Range. I'm not used to being a passenger. I don't know about this. All right, here we go, mate. We're rocking and rolling here. Woo -hoo. Looks good, mate. Is it soft? No, it's not soft enough not to lose anything. What buttons are you pressing now? Can I press the button? I get a feeling you might already be pushing buttons, little fella. That fly's still in here. Just let me know if you want any advice, Glenn. OK, mate. See how nice and slow I'm taking this? Yeah. That's how you should do it, mate. I'm surprised we're going to make it. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit lumpy and bumpy, a bit soft, but um, Glenno's teaching me how to do it. Be nice to your gear. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe there are 278 species of plants in the Kurong? These small shrubs that we're seeing are actually helping to keep the sand dunes together by protecting the sand. It's very tight through here. Yeah, I don't think you get too much four-wheel driving in here, eh? I wouldn't want to be in a bus. A bit breezy up top here, boys. I see water! Woohoo! H2O. H2O, beauty. The ocean, the southern ocean. 
Oh, mate, look at that. White caps everywhere. She's pretty flush out there. Oh, looky, looky. Oh, oh. Oh, there's lots of white caps. Oh, a bit of a step up here. Jesus. Oh. What a lie about this passengering business. All right, big fella, what do you reckon? I reckon if we put a sail on the top of our trucks, we'd be doing 200 kilometres an hour. <laughs> the whole park's a beautiful spot. It's definitely worth a look. We did kind of get it in a bit of a breezy day. Breezy day. That's the understatement of the year, mate. It was hard to keep the Land Cruiser going in a straight line. <laughs> Jeez, it makes you feel alive, though. It's a beautiful but wild and lonely place, the Kurong. It's been 40 years since Storm Boy, and this year they're actually doing a remake. And apparently, it will be filmed here again. I better tell them to bring their wind jackets. I can imagine on a nice, calm day, that beach would be a beautiful spot just to pull up, put the awning out, sit down and spend the day. Blow a dog off a leash. Let's get off this beach. Here we go, there's a marker here. 32 mile crossing, we're gonna take it. Here we come. Oh, this way. Into a. Yeah, listen to that. What does that sound? All one. Good, eh? Yeah. Quite enjoyed the beach, quite enjoyed dropping down into low range, but it wasn't really nice weather. In reflection, I've been travelling all over this country. There's not too many places I haven't been. Um, down the road at the end of the Coorong is a, an Aboriginal mission. Out the right there, mates, uh, Lake Victoria. Lake Albert is um, around Meningi. But this Lake Victoria out there, it's one of the really, really massive big area. It is big. It looks like a bay, not a lake. But where we're heading at the moment is down to um, a point down here called uh, Ralkin. It's an Aboriginal mission. So a very, very special man uh, came from out this way. And there's a building out here I want to show you. Don't mean nothing to you, does it? This is a church on an Aboriginal mission. Right. This is Ralkin, this community here, Nanajeri mob. But that church is very, very special. $50 note. Yep. Right, uh, have a look at this. Oh, you picked up on that. Yep. See go. that building on the bottom corner there? Yep. That's the building That's where we're we are. At right there now. Can even see the bell. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it was great that Ernie took us to Ralkin. I bet 99.9% .9 of Australians do not know, and I didn't know, Keno didn't know. David, David Anapon, Anapon. Uniapon. Uniapon. Yeah. David Uniapon is not only on the $50 note, but he's, um, he was an inventor and he had a lot of great ideas. He was sort of like our version of Da Vinci when it comes to that sort of stuff. Don't take my money, come on, hand it back. So some people may refer to this as a, you know, the pineapple. Yeah. We, this is Uncle David. Fair enough. Come inside the church. Ralkin actually means meeting place, and for thousands of years, the parliament of the local tribes would meet in this area. Now, it's a meeting place of a different kind. David Janiapin was the first Aboriginal to be published in English, even writing articles for the Sydney Daily Telegraph. He is considered to be the Australian version of Leonardo da Vinci for his mechanical ideas, including the shearing machine that is the basis for modern mechanical shears. As he could never afford to patent his ideas, he would never received any financial return for any of his inventions, including the shears. It was amazing. And it's good that the greater Australia uh, recognise that gentleman for what he'd done. After leaving Ralkin, we had to find, we wanted to go to a camp spot that I knew, but I think half of Adelaide was there camping. 
and um, set up about 20 bloody trailers up on that lovely little spot where I wanted to camp near the ferry. So our leaders had taken us to a lovely spot. It was blowing a gale, about 200 k's. It's absolutely amazing. It was a great camp spot. Just wish that wind was um, not there. Windy or not, it certainly is a beautiful place. And the wind calmed down just enough for me to pull my projector out. What are you guys watching? Get out of the road, get out of the road, get out of the road. What do you mean, get out of the road? Oh. What are you watching? watching Sit down, shut up. Out, mate. What is it? We're watching some clown show with Keno. Oh, yeah? <laughs> hey, there's Ernie, hey, hey, I know that guy. Good guys. looking bloke, hey? Oh, yeah, he's pretty. One bit wow. That wind was like nothing I've ever heard. Needless to say, none of us got the best night's sleep. Yeah, well, once daylight had arrived, we packed our camp and shot through, which is not an easy task, and hit the track for our next destination, Kangaroo Island. And what a beautiful drive it was along the coast to get there. I've never been to Kangaroo Island but I told people I was going there and they go, oh yeah, that's on the bucket list. So I'm going, okay, it must be pretty cool over there. We headed to Cape Jarvis where we booked our tickets on the Sea Ferry Link. It's a couple of hours drive and we want to make sure we would get there with time to spare. The fun thing about it was you have to line up on all these different lines and they're working in their heads how they're going to fit everybody around the side to make everybody fit inside it. I'll listen to this radio and this one. We're going good here, Ernie. You back in the trailer on, Frikey. He's given up, mate, I'll tell you. I'm copping instruction everywhere here. Bueno's all over it, like a fat kid on a cupcake. <laughs> we had um, Ernie talking through the radio on 16. Uh, we had the guys behind us coming through the radio on 24. And I was giving Gleno the comments that were coming through there, the instructions. Come on, up, Keno, I'll kick you out. But Keno was more of a pain in the butt than anything. Straight back there now. Shut up. Uh, he was just getting bamboozled with too much information. You're done. I feel left out. You are. You're still on the mainland. I'm going to get a black boat. And the ride across was nice. It was beautiful. I mean, less than an hour. It's about a 45 minute trip to do the 16K crossing. Kangaroo Island is such a popular place that Sea Link operates two ferries back and forth all day. What are you two blokes got me over here for? We're we gonna go and have a look at some seals, swim with dolphins, but we're mainly trying to attract the sharks. We want to see sharks. So swim with dolphins and you're more likely to see sharks. Yeah, yeah. Is there low range stuff we can get into? Well, none of us have ever been there. So it's a case of see what we come up against. So this is an experiment? Yeah, we're explorers. Get the other end, we're all facing out, ready to go, and we're dead. Loving the trees, mate, loving the trees. Oh, isn't it wonderful? They're a gum, are they? What sort of, um... Oh, they're not, they're not a ghosty, are they? Uh, koala gums, actually, mate. These are the one of the main trees that the koalas love, so there's big mobs of koalas on the island, so keep an eye out. It's like an entrance for us. Welcome to Kangaroo Island. We just got off the ferry, fueled up, heading down the coastline. Another phone call from the mechanics, but this time it was good news. Righto, mate. Good job. See you, Braden. Bye. That sounds good. Did you get that? I did. The parts are there. Did you say about an hour, hour and a half we'd be on the road? On the road. Well, that's more than the parts are there. That means it's going back together. Yeah, it's going back together. So. Obviously the parts got there a bit earlier than we thought. Uh, they're getting into it and yeah, you'll be on the road. So oh, that makes me happy. That makes me happy. Why does it make you so happy? <laughs> you can have your camp control back. We'd left the young fella with the car, Sherman, so we're hoping to get him on a ferry over to Kangaroo Island the next morning. Um, so that was good news. What wasn't good news was the change in weather right before we're supposed to hit the water again. 
dolphin diving. Who does that on a day that's probably 16 degrees? They reckon the water temperature will be warmer, but who does that? Sounds like it's got a V8 in it, Gleno. Oh. Yeah, when I heard about the swimming with the dolphins, I was hoping I was going to get out of that. I had a towel around my knees, I had my jacket on, I had my spray jacket on, uh, I had the hood on my, two hoods on my jacket on. It was cold. We're going around the corner here, I hope the dolphins have gone to sea. The sea is a bit rough, but it makes for a bit of fun. We stop to see a few bits and pieces along the way, and some of us really made ourselves at home. We've been swimming with about between 60 and 80 dolphins a day down here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's their relaxation area, so they're pretty happy to be here. Well, I love dolphins. I could look at them all day and take photos of them, but actually getting in the water with them, like, I'll leave that to the freaks. You ready, Glenno? Yeah, mate, ready. Get your swimmers on, mate. OK. Your DTs. They're on. The idea of swimming with, with the dolphins doesn't bother me. I know there's a lot of sharks and stuff around the area, and but I'm a surfer, so I've been in the water with sharks most of my life. You look ridiculous, Kenno. You look like a baby seal. So I'll be warm. You'd hear the, the sounds, they make real high pitched like and clicky, clicky sounds and high pitched notes and sound they sound quite cool. They look at you like, you know, you're not a dolphin, what are you, kind of thing. Sort of an intrigued look. I didn't know the big fellow had a phobia about it. All of a sudden, the big fella's putting on a wetsuit. <laughs> How to get this rest on? We are. Can you breathe, mate? Oh, proud of the big fella. He went in the water and had a bit of a swim around with the dolphins. Everyone else is doing it and going, there's a boat full of people here and I'm going to be the only one not doing it. Harden up, Glenno. Shark! Shark! <laughs> yeah, I took to it like a duck to water. Their little legs were flapping around. Yeah, it's a sight to be seen. Majestic. We'll go around them up, mate. Here they come. You go that way. <laughs> the water was only about three metres at the deepest. The dolphins weren't being aggressive. They were just patrolling up and down, up and down, settling down. Being in the water with them, I have this feeling there is an understanding. It was awesome. He came out with a big grin on his face. <laughs> So it's sort of like one of those achievements that he conquered, his fear of going in the water, knowing that there's big bitey things in there that are around that area. Great travelling with Ernie. We get to show him from a full driver's point of view. Like you go off, get off the beaten track, and he's seeing places that he hasn't seen before. And for a guy who's travelled this country so much, it's pretty cool. In 1802, Captain Matthew Flinders and his crew sighted and landed here during exploration of the south coast. Kangaroo meat was the first fresh meat the crew had eaten in six months, and in recognition of this, Flinders named it Kangaroo Island. Remarkable rocks such a beautiful place. It's very eerie, sort of reminds you of um, Picnic at Hanging Rock. To see what time has done 
had done to those rock, yeah, you know, quite remarkable. And there's all these places where you can just lay on your back and have a look around. But it's a great area all around there. Try to get your head around the fact that these rocks have been forming for over 500 million years. The power of heavy rain, strong winds and pounding waves have all helped to create these remarkable shapes. Pretty special. Big fella, what's going on? We're going to take you on a little adventure. We want to show you something. Is this one of your little detours, is it? We're going to visit some of Gleno's ancestors. Oh, OK. Well, this is going to be fun then. I mean, you know, I really like meeting people. They are mammals. They grow to about 300 kilos. <laughs> there you go. There's a hint. Well, so you're a little fella of the big fella clan? That's right. I'm only a pup. We're going down to Seal Bay, mate, but I think they're actually sea lions down there, not seals. Dirty great big sea lions. We're no of the ocean, Ernie. <laughs> Apparently they call it Seal Bay and not Sea Lion Bay because sea lions are in the seal family, so it still does make sense. I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Um, I, I did read that you had to have a chaperone to go and see the G'day, sea lions. Hello. Nice to meet you. Good, nice to meet you. Welcome. We met up with Tanya. Tanya took us down, gave us a few instructions to stay behind her and stay close to her the whole time. Do they yeah. get snow here? Uh, no, but there's not much between us and Antarctica. No, Walk down the track and you could actually see through all the shrubs, little tunnel systems where the sea lions, apparently they go up there in the real cold weather. There's a few sunbakers. Yeah. Tan. <laughs> Pretty cool, isn't it? It's very cool. Only a little fella. Mum, there's people here! Mum! <laughs> I think they were more happy to sleep than do anything else, and apparently that's that's why they're there. They swim out for three days out of the continental shelf, feed, just fill themselves up, and then they come back to this beach to sleep and digest all the food. Um, those three days that they go out to hunt, the mothers actually leave their pups here. Oh, OK. So no mum means no food and no protection as well. So those little ones um, tend to be a little bit more nervous of us as well. That sanctuary area around there, it's, it might seem a little bit touchy. You know, they're very, you know, they don't let you do anything. We're well, not supposed to. It's a sanctuary. It's where those limited amount of sea lions live. Um, one tenth of the world population live on that beach. About five k, she reckons, up and down that beach. After being heavily hunted in the 19th century for their leather and oil, the Australian sea lion is now an endangered animal. There are about a thousand seals in this colony, but despite becoming a protected species in 1964, the numbers are still declining. They get entangled in fishing gear and other rubbish, most of which comes from the land. It makes me sad to think where the reason their population is suffering. Mate, can you just sort of lift your neck up like that? Hang on. <laughs> Bit of a correlation there. Bit <laughs> Bit of resemblance there, mate. I don't know what it is, though. You've, you've evolved a little bit. Look at these ones just cuddling. Just have a cuddle. They weren't overly energetic, I guess you could say. They were all just sort of in a food coma. Must be a bit like has been after Parmigiana night at the pub when he smashes four of them. We all knew, the three of us knew, that it was important, the work that they were doing there. Yeah, so it was, um, it was an awesome day just being down there. Yeah, I thought we were going to see lions or see, yeah. see lions on the road or something. Mm. Just see lions. Got back to yeah. the car park and next thing, vroom, Shermie rocks in in my car. Hey! hey. My yeah. car! Get out! No, thank you. Stoked to thank see my you. car. I think I even hugged him. I might have even kissed him. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I had my wagon back. Woohoo! Oh. All right, get your stuff out, Sherman. I get to get rid of him. Really? Yeah. <laughs> my patience was running thin. How good is this, guys? This is unreal, can I? I'm back. I'm back in my ute. 
gone. Seven! <laughs> it is seven! You know, I, I couldn't get that trailer off the back of my car quick enough. Not that there's anything wrong with the trailer. It was more what came with it. I tell you what, though. Once he was back in his own car, I think he actually became even more annoying. All this stuff I've got in here, I just didn't know, you know, how much I missed it all. Just little things like tools and, you know, my toothpaste. I didn't have any toothpaste. Screws, deodorant, knives, forks, cups, plates, spoons. Can I? Fridges, canopies, lighting. Tongs, flippers. Can I? Beer fridge. Extra battery power. Can I? And turn the volume down. It is unreal, Kenno. Kangaroo Island is like 1,600 kilometres of, of blacktop. It's not a full driving haven. It's, um, but there's lots of dirt roads and tracks in between the bitumen that you can explore on. And what you can come across is, is magnificent. This little fellow here is what they call a monotreme. Two species belong to the monotreme family. This little fella here on your five cent piece and the other little fella on the 20 cent piece. They lay eggs and suckle their young. Part of full driving and tripping around Australia, it's not necessarily doing hill climbs and lifting a wheel. It's also just getting on the dirt, getting off the hard top and touring. And Kangaroo Island's perfect for that. So that was a lot of fun being on Kangaroo Island. It was really a great island to be on. People are nice, friendly, it's sort of homely. But yeah, it was, um, I love Kangaroo Island, it's good. Once we're back on the mainland, we had a two and a half hour trip heading northeast. I can't wait for this next part. Yeah, so we jumped off the highway onto a dirt road, heading into Eagle View, full drive park. Didn't really know what to expect. We turned into this place. Oh, the gum trees were just beautiful. Big river gums. It reminded me of being out in the Flinders Ranges uh, when we were driving along creek beds. He'd set up an area for us to camp where there was heaps of gums that had obviously fallen down in a fire. They sort of made a, a border around the camp and the backdrop is just beautiful. It's just a great spot to camp. Ernie's not far behind us. He stopped to visit a mate. Kenno and I decided to make a start on setting up camp. And what a beautiful place to do it. It's not set up yet, what's going on? We were getting worried about you, mate. Still setting up while I'm not late, am I? That's the best thing about going bush, Ernie. There's no such thing as late. Kino's apparently doing some cooking on the coals tonight. So we've got to get a fire cracking and then get ready to give him a hand. All right, we're doing the feathered chicken, no? The, no, no. Call it the foul wog bog. The foul wog bog. What about the feathered? Foul is the chicken. Feathered wog bog. The wog is the Italian, no disrespect. And the bog is like the bolognese thing. <sighs> you can't say bog because it's B-O-L-G. So it is a silent L in this cooking scene. <laughs> All right, you so wanna, what are we doing? You want to crack them in <laughs> there for oh, me and make up an egg wash? I'm not helping. Can you get the chicken out of the national for us, mate? That'd be fantastic. Crummies, crummies, crumbs. There's a How lot of chicken. That? Crummies, crumbs. That'll do the job. A lot of um, fowl going in this fowl wog bog. Do you we'll know that you it? don't have to cook as much for me anymore? Why? Because I'm just easing up on the amount of food I eat. You're not eating for two anymore? No, I was eating for three. <laughs> I've cut back to two. That'll burn. Need some flour. Burn, oh, baby, burn. That. All right, now we've got to get the I'll chicken I'll even crosshatch it. Ready. Thanks for that, mate. Thanks, I'm going to get good. the chicken ready. So this is the fowl part of the fowl wog bog. I'm just yeah. going to slice these guys in half through the centre so you can whack that in there. Okay. And then that in there. Uh, yeah, so egg, then flour. Okay. And then breadcrumbs. And then egg again. You egg, yeah, but do mud. those. Keep those, the... that in there. Then flour. Then just, can you guys take instruction or what? Look, he is a good cook. He gets good flavours into food. Ernie and I we deliberately try and upset him. I got a mate of mine who's a chef. Double who flowered. Would, who would, like, go off. I don't even know why I bloody cook with you fellas. I reckon that's probably going to be enough. Look at this. Yeah, turn yeah. it into mud. 
turn it into mud. Hey, you, put, you just put your fingers in your fire and you got damper. Can I whisk that? No, bugger off. No, well, I'm going to cut the basil for later. Basil? I went and got it from the uh, fresh herb garden just over behind that burnt stump over there. Oh, look at that for a snitty. That is beautiful. Oh, ho, ho. stop it. I'm going to go heat up a pan oh, so I can wow, start boy. cooking these up. That's real chicken schnitzel, you know. The ones you get from the supermarket come already crumbs. They're just, yeah. it's, that's not a good chicken snitty. I'm cooking the chicken schnitzel. Yeah, oh, they're almost ready. Minutes. Minutes. Cooking the oh, chicken schnitzel. Yeah, they're minutes. nearly it's ready. Up. Can one of you guys mix that ricotta cheese in with two eggs in that bowl? Oh, just chuck the shells and all in. We'll That's it. one thing about foul wog bog. It yeah. takes a long time to put together. There's a lot oh, of ingredients. Fill that big pot. No. Cooking with friends, they call this. It's cooking with friends. Say so friends. Friends. And you wear a spoon. All right. First so. layer. Bit of. Uh, Tomato sauce. Just do a layer of tomato sauce in the bottom of the bottom here. Some sheets, thank you. There you are, mate. I just gave him the sheets. <laughs> the so you've got tomato paste. Tomato paste, lasagna sheets. Lasagna sheets. Yeah. Bit of that gear. Ricotta with the cheese. So yeah. this should be ready by breakfast time. Next layer, chicken. Just fill the thing with chicken. Now what? I'm gonna need the cheeses. There's, Craft the cheeses. There's three cheeses. Mozzarella. Oh, that's a nice light sprinkle of like a pizza. cheese. And another light sprinkle of the tasty. Isn't that a suburb in Darwin? I don't know. No, it's Palmerston. Oh, there you go. And then a bit of this stuff, a bit of basil. Good name, eh? A bit of that in there. Now we go a bit more red. Another plate. All right. Now Beautiful. What? Bit of this. Bit of lasagna sheets again. And then more ricotta. All this fart assing around better be worth it, Keno. We'll keep building it and we'll throw it in the campfire. How long for? 45. It's 45. midnight now. No, it's not even close. Yeah. Be close to an hour now. We're almost done. Just going to do the top layer now. Bit more of the uh, pasta sauce. And on the top layer, I like to mix mix it together. With? With the Everything. cheese sauce. And the rest of the other cheese to make it massive melt on top. Oh, yeah. All right, it's going to be a cheese fiesta. Let's just cheese up the top. Yes, that's enough, Glenn. But I haven't got the palmy on yet. Get it on there. Throw the whole lot on. Yep, yep, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I did throw a lot of extra cheese on top. He didn't want me to, but... We might have to call it the... Oh, no. We might that's have to call it the way. coronary. <laughs> <laughs> that's 45? it. 45? 45 minutes in the fire. Heat on top and bottom. Another 45 minutes. <laughs> right Who's got this. the shovel? Right now, I'm tempted to try my luck on a feral goat or a stray sheep. We ended up eating at 10 past 11 that night, so which is pretty normal. <laughs> hey, Ernie, wake up. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. No! Look at that. Oh, look at that. OK. I'll have some. Cut some up. Oh, he's cut off your bit. <laughs> Yeah, this bit. <laughs> it only took like 45 minutes to cook it. And it took like two minutes to eat it. <laughs> he does himself, eh? Well, we got to get up in an hour, so I'm going to go and eat it. So do you guys take it back or what? Take what back? The, the double, double flowering. Done a good job. Take it back. Apologise. Probably been over egg. All you whinging. Apologise my ass. Damn good, though. Brent, this is an absolutely beautiful property. We got up this morning, the birds were chirping. There was no wind. You ordered the sun in for us. Yep. Eagle View full drive track. How big is it? It's family sheep grazing property of 4,000 acres. And what we've done is we've developed 32 kilometres of track to, to drive around. So wow, all low range gear, so 
Hey, that's us. That's low range, that's what it's all about. And look, there's a bit of history. Look, you've done a few things around here. And I read that your wife has actually, um, she's got a bit of a passion for nature. We took over the property about 30 years ago from the family. And yeah, we love the, the nature and the bush and everything. So ever since then, she's had me out planting extra trees and doing more conservation work. So yeah, it's just sort of evolved that um, yeah, did a lot of conservation work on the property and then started to want to get um, the public to come and enjoy it and share with us our passion. I know here you're, you're really tight with the four-wheel drive community, which is great. They helped out a few years ago with um, something that wasn't real good that happened out here. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, well, January three years ago, we had the, the big Eden Valley bushfire came through this area. That was here. So it came through from Eden Valley to here. Um, wind changed just as it got into our property and then it took it from here 40 kilometres north through to Truro. So she burned a big area, but the worst part was, um, yeah, took out our whole property. We, we saved all the buildings but lost all the fences, had to, the sheep that didn't get killed in the fire we had to sell off. Um, a lot of trees burnt, as you can see. Few, few didn't quite make it, so yeah, a bit of devastation. But the best, well, the best part is, you know, the, the camaraderie between um, the four-wheel drivers. They jumped in straight away, came out, helped clear trees off the track, clear fences for us and tidy up the property so that we could reopen that part of the business and generate some income. And yeah, that was just great to have that help jump in. Well, it's really sad that that happened. And look, you know, I get you probably would have had a few head of sheep out here as well. Yes, yeah, that wasn't such a nice part of it, but um, it's nature doing what, yeah wielding her big stick and saying she doesn't quite like what we're doing and wants to change things a little bit. Mate, well, you've got a great outlook. Oh, we, we just love the property and the passion and yeah, just just that help from people to come and you know, volunteer their time to help pull down burnt fences and clear trees off of tracks and put up signage so we could get things back happening. It's just it's just a good feeling to know that people care. That is great, you know, and you know, the full drive community as a whole, we are good people. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the future hold for us? Well, for you, sorry. Well, the future, making a little bit of a change because yeah, after we sort of moved into the tourism part of it, um, we opened up some bed and breakfast accommodation, built a new house here on the property, opened up some restaurant facilities, but it's time for us to move on a little bit. And I'm not saying move very far. Um, we're selling off the accommodation part of the business and going to totally focus our work on the farm and the four-wheel drive part of the business. So we're doing the big move and relocating a kilometre up the road. And you're smiling. You seem to be pretty happy about that. Oh, well, it's time for some change. Uh, I love the four-wheel driving. Yeah, that's one of my passions. Yeah. And um, this is going to give me time to actually get out there and have a bit more fun myself and, and do things with, with everybody. Well, I appreciate you sharing your story with us. I appreciate you having us here. And we're going to go and have some fun. Well, you get out there and explore those rugged hills. Brenton was a very interesting guy to talk to. Very humble. The outlook the guy has, sensational. He goes, you know, that's life. Life gets thrown at you, you just deal with it and you move on. Appreciate it. No problems. That's really inspiring. Hey boys, this is our chance to get into low range. This mild to wild stuff. Apparently some hairy stuff in here. Looking forward to see how the 79 flexes. I'll be right behind you, mate. Yeah, I'm looking forward to having a bit of fun myself. Test out these uh, airbags, new airbags that are going into the into the tray, and I've left the camper at the campsite because it's what you do. Oh, Brent was telling me that. Um, he recomm recommends 22 to 24 PSI as well, so we'll get up here, have a bit of a walk around, have a look at the tracks and do the air down action. Well, when we started driving the tracks, there's a sign that says select low range here. Pay attention, <laughs> because if you don't, you're in trouble. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll First gear, high range air, halfway up. Whoop, I should have followed that sign. <laughs> so whacked it in the low range, and then yeah, from then on, as soon as that went into low range, that was it. it. Stayed in low range. There's no way we're getting up this next part without shifting the transfer case. That's for sure. Hey guys, bit of an early bit here. Just wait till I get up, eh? 
I'll report through. Yeah, report as you go, please, because I'd like to know how to do that. Cool, first gear low range. Oh, she's flexing, Glenn. I've never seen it flex before. Feeling good. It was probably 45 degrees, mm -hmm. which is steep for a full drive and loose. You're going to like that one. That um, definitely opposite, sir. Uh, moving with it is, it's going to be well here. had to uh, roll back just a touch and there's a little bit more momentum over that bit. It was a bit of a test for me too because I got the, the new canopy on the 79 with my old canopy which is way too heavy and I would not have tackled anything like that. That's first gear low range journey and I'll give you a call through in just a moment. Let's we'll get up the top here. Still a bit gnarly up here guys, eh? Yeah, there's another bit here. Just hold back there guys. Wait till I uh, get up here. Just take any track up it or what? Mate, yeah, I don't think there's any right or wrong way. You can see where I went, it's just straight up the guts. Yeah, you don't want to be hitting it too hard. You want to be hitting not or not, just over idle, a little bit of momentum, mate, just so you can bounce through those opposites. All right, have a crack at it. Good luck, mate. I can hear the enthusiasm in the big fella's voice, and I can also hear the fact that he's let out a bit of expression, so it must have been tough, so I'm going to give it a crack. I found a hole. Found a hole and just roll out of it. Yeah, back her up. But um, back it up straight, Ernie. You don't want to keep turning. Right. And had to come back a couple of times. I think I might have given him yeah, a few tips through the radio as well, just wheel placement. Here we go. We'll try another tack. And then he just found the line, the right line, and. Crikey. That's the way. That's the way, Ernie. Yeah. Keep going. Keep it into it. Keep it into it. Up. Well yeah. done, mate. I tell you what, buddy eyes are like saucepans here, mate. How'd that feel? I'm still going yet. That 100 series, not only a couple of months ago, was for blacktop only. Just for driving around Australia on the blacktop. And here he is, with it all done up, and he's giving everything a go. He listens to everything we got to tell him. Thank you, mate. Well that done. Was, that was awesome, but scary. It's amazing what these things can do, isn't it? I just trust it. All right, here I come, my turn. And now I've got the new canopy on the back. We've actually put some airbags in the rear suspension. I haven't had airbags in it before, so I was still playing with them myself. I guess you could say mine was now the opposite to Glenno's. Mine decided it wanted to start doing monos because I had such a rigid rear end. Alrighty, locker. Went to tackle it again, and then, yeah, with all the, the rigid rear end, the car just wanted to do a big mono. Not me. I'm just looking at the sky. Everything emptied off my dash, into my lap. I was all crossed up in the radio. The windscreen wipers got flicked on but I just had to keep keep the boot in. I did a massive mono. <laughs> I don't know how far the front of my car was in the air then, but that was full on. <laughs> my heart skipped a few beats and um, got to the top of the hill and let about 40 PSI out of each of those airbags. What do you got, big fella? A hole. A mine. An old gold mine. Gold mine. Gold mine. You reckon there's any left in here? Yep. Be heaps. I reckon we should send the little fella in there. I'll go and have a look around. You'd be able to stand yeah. up in there, can I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I decided to go inside and see how far it went. I'm not sure if it was gold or copper. I think they mined both on that property, but um, it certainly wasn't a massive operation. Probably one or two fellas with um, with picks and, and shovels. Probably went in 15 metres. I don't think anyone's mined there for a while. The only thing it's getting used for now is uh, a little mud swallows have got a nest right up the end in there, so keep them dry and, and warm in there. But uh, pretty interesting. It have been hard work banging through all that rock. There are quite a few old mines on the property, each with its own history. They were mostly discovered in the 1860s and 70s, a good 20 years after gold was discovered in South Australia. As well as gold, they've also mined copper, nickel and silver on the property. Tell you what, when you get to the top of those hills and you see the view, 
just goes on and on and on forever. It's just amazing. Well, there's not just three vehicles in low range, there's five, two crew cars. Young Sherman, he's a young uh, rest about boy at Roost Systems. He's learning very quickly what not to do. I uh, brutally messed up a tyre by uh, dodging a hole and falling into another hole. So tyres come off the bead and now I've got to change it. So he actually peeled the tyre off the rim in a not so nice situation. What have we got here? Oh, okay. That is off the bead. Hopefully that's all it is. Do you want to jack up the car? I get Sherman in there, put on the brake, eh? This is not a good situation. That jack, I know he's got his foot on the brake, but that's gonna... It's bending. I think we need to... Get on flatter ground. We need to roll him forward, just... Even if we get up on here, it yep. be better. The safest way we came up um, to, to fix the situation um, was ahead. to move the car forward um, just enough to get it in a stable area um, and then chock the wheels, chock the wheels very heavily and then have Sherman in the car with the foot on the brake at all times, car in park plus the handbrake on. So basically the foot on the brake was just an extra safety. Your foot is firmly planted on the brake, isn't it? Definitely. All we had to do was take weight off that tyre, just so we could manoeuvre the tyre on the rim, just to, to get that seal for the bead again. Turn it slightly to the right. It's always nerve-wracking waiting to hear that big pop, but eventually hey! we hear it. And I know a lot of people are going to give us um, their opinions on what we did and how we did it. But when you're in that situation, you've got to do the best you can. There was nothing else we could do. We had to get that car down, otherwise we would destroy the tyre, destroy the rim, destroy the backing plate on the brakes. It would have been a lot more damage and that thing wouldn't have been getting out of there. Uh, we got to the top of some of these lookouts and you can see that we were on the only hills in the area and the rest of the area where you looked out, as far as the eye could see, was just flat as and all, all farmland. So this property itself I don't know whether it was from volcanic things or I don't know, but they were just the only big hills in the area and it was all rocky, shaley sort of stuff and everywhere else was just flat. Stunning scenery, guys. It is, isn't it? It's really, really nice up here. Beautiful flowing hills. They almost look like carpet. Got another little uh, first gear low range pinch up here by the looks of it. A little bit of a rocky hoop to do. Jumping there, big fella. Yeah, foot bounced on the accelerator pedal a little bit there. Eh? I could drive this track forever. There's something mesmerising about this place. I can't see the dirt. Eagle view, four-wheel drive track, not tracks, which means there's one big loop around the property, and it's one way. It's um, very well set up. The, the surrounding area, like anybody, even if you're not a four-wheel driver, would love the scenery. It's absolutely spectacular. And the guy running the place with his wife, they're four drivers themselves. They know the difference between beginner, medium, and experienced four drivers. The place has got it all. Heading down into a gully, boys. Roger. Bit of a sharp one. Well, I don't think you'll drag your bum anymore, Glenno, because the canopy's not as long anymore. Look at that angle coming down. You won't be able to see where you're going, Ernie, but just follow my tracks down to the left. It's not going there and just to trash your car. Well, sure you could if you wanted to. And that's the major difference for me. Cannot see. That'll put everything back on your dash, though. 
next thing we came across made me feel like we were driving through the English countryside. Where do you see this, fellas? What do you got, mate? It's a stone wall. Actually, I think I read, I read something on the on the back of the map saying this was built in the 18, 1890 by the Scottish. Must be a sheep wall. It's rocking. It won't rock, I tell you, if you put up posts, that'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Look at the way it's built, that's unreal. That's a nice bit of work, isn't it? Looks a bit like the Great Wall, doesn't it? A miniature version. After early settlers kept losing wooden fences to fires, Scottish and Irish tradesmen were brought out to Australia to build these amazing stone walls. They can actually be found right around the country and hopefully they keep standing for many years to come. We've made a lot of progress on this loop track, but it looks like the trickiest bit is still to come. Bit of a gnarly uh, three point turny. Three point turn? So, yeah, just wait there until I get down. Just, uh, drop off some whatnot in there as well. See how I go, Ken I might need a hand here. And there was a two stage downhill with a very tight left hand at 90 degrees. So, you had to tack it in, in two different stages. It's actually going to go straight ahead here, do a three point turn, to head down the next one. And so it's very slow, first gear, low range. I always put the rear locker ring when I'm going down because opposites and you're always keeping one wheel on the ground so you're not getting that slippage. Yeah, it's far enough, mate. You're going to start going downhill. That's yeah, very interesting. Got one more rock. That's it. It's going to pop out for a second, have a quick look. So I actually got out and I memorised where I had to keep my wheels to get down. Geez, you know, it's going to be gnarly if the big fella has to get out and have a good look. Same thing, it's straight down. You couldn't, I couldn't see over the bottom what was there. A few holes on this next section. I might get down the bottom and guide you, Ernie. I appreciate that, thank you, mate. Slow and easy is, is the way to do it. You don't go fast down there, you start wrecking panels, you start wrecking tyres, wheels, diffs, everything. There's a big girly on the right hand side, it's going to take a nice and easy pass. The minute there, you were 45 degree angle straight down. Slow and easy. All right, I'll park up out of the way, mate, and I'll uh, come back with a handheld and guide you down. I love driving and I love trying these challenges, but it's something that I wouldn't normally do, so I wasn't really mindset in doing it. How's your little town car feeling, Ernie? I love this little town car, but just putting through all this stuff here, it's just a little bit worried about the GK. Bugger that. You saw what I did, I went straight ahead there. Yeah, I saw that. I'm just worried about that left back wheel dropping off in there. All right, try reverse. See if that works. Crikey, that works. I didn't want to see them like a pussy, but pretty scary for me. Left and down, like I can't even see. Straight. Okay. Straight. Is that it? Oh shit. I'm going to ride you down. That's it. Took a great big rock taking care of me, Juco, on that side. Shit, just put your wheel in it. Right there. Right ahead. Okay, start swinging around. Rest is yours. Oh my. Right, right. Thanks for that, big fella. Oh yo, I'm coming then. This is um, some good low ranging. Yeah, so switchbacks like that, I was I was quite glad that I left the trailer back at base camp because um, 
I just I wouldn't have had room to turn around. I wouldn't have had room to um, to, to reverse that trailer back and to, to uh, attack the next obstacle. No chance. A bit of pain on that rock just there. Yeah, there <laughs> certainly is. <laughs> bit of free fall. All right, Sam. Beauty. Well, that was a good little section. Oh, mate, how good is this? Mate, I tell you what, it was worth the drive. Turned on the weather for us too, didn't it? Beautiful. Look at this, not a cloud in the sky. <sighs> so, guys, what do you reckon? You recommend this to your four-wheel drive community? Yeah. Definitely. Ah, oh, well. It's that time in the RV. Beer o'clock. Yeah, do the rock thing first. Let's do the rock thing. There you go. Done. If it falls down, it's our fault. <laughs> if I was to round up the trip, it doesn't matter how much you prepare. You don't counter for incidents. No, yeah, I've got this for that. Yeah, no problems. I'm covering this. Yeah, that's all sorted. But not when your axle pops out from underneath you. And to have that on day one. No, we're going to get through this. And it's just sort of like that frontier stuff. You sort of got an idea of where you're going to go. You've got a sanity, and sometimes wonder. Um, but it was a great, great run. Saw some beautiful places, differences in terrain, um, coastline. Like I'm a coast person, I love, love coast. Kangaroo Island, I just loved Kangaroo Island. I've spent a bit of time on Tassie. Um, and I think they're quite similar. Tassie's pretty relaxed, but uh, I think Kangaroo Island is just that little bit more relaxed again. Yeah, if you've got a chance, not a lot of full driving, but Kangaroo Island's definitely worth a look. We've seen a lot, we've done a lot, but to come out at Eagle View four wheel drive track and spend a day in the glorious sun and testing our vehicles and having a lot of fun doing it and oh, teaching, shit. you know, teaching Ernie more bits and pieces about low range, we left this trip on a super high. Coming up next episode, we're exploring the stunning Coffin Bay National Park. We visit the organ pipes in the Gawler Ranges, go exploring through Mount Ive Sheep Station and visit the Lake Gairdner Salt Lake during Speed Week. This is not an episode to be missed. We're in a bit of a pickle. Here we are. We're going to have to set up camp here <laughs> on the side of the road. And we're out of fuel. <laughs> Hey. Make a U-turn and proceed to Glenelg Highway. Oh, make a U-turn. Proceed to the route. <laughs> I can't do a U-turn. Look at this. Number one, episode 18. Number one. Hello, fellow Lone oh. Rangers. And I'm number one. I'm number one. Number one. Number one. I remember Ernie, last time I was on the boat, he picked everything out and was bloody... <laughs> anything that moved. Yeah. Did he try and eat it? He usually tries to eat it. <laughs> Mars, you could get a sponsor with those shorts if this makes the big time. So you could have unlimited supplies of short shorts. That'd be so good. Gold, I think they mine copper here too. Ow, ow, ow. Thanks for that. I must have been dreaming about you, Yeah, he's dreaming about me. Now he's got a black eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got two of those. Look at that. Walk on. I'm more special than you. Is that because I'm bigger than you? <laughs> and that church. Can I have a closer look? Thanks. That's mine now. Who would like to know some interesting facts about Kangaroo Island? Me, 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 me. Pick me, pick me. Oops. Pick me, pick me. Um, interesting <laughs> fact. Australian sea lions. You can see it, couldn't you? It's reading off his bloody fur bone. Fur seals breed. I normally don't get in the water under 30 degrees. 17, eh? You're put, trying to put your leg through the armhole, Glenn. <laughs> Righto. Okay, still rolling for some reason. Oh, <laughs> cool. Don't touch me. So I just thought Righto. I'd be someone different. Give it, someone give know. a clap. Got you it. missed him. Oh, no, oh, gold one. Like big wombats. Can I bring some gold out for us, all right? I'll yeah, bring some gold out. Okay, this is the third largest island with rocks on it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Did you like your walk? Yeah, walking's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! 
how could you not like the fella? You know, you know I've met him and sort of I've been touched by that guy. I'll, I'll, I'll reverse that. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> I've been touched by that fella. <laughs> and you get to press the buttons. Can't help Bernie out with his winter. Still haven't got a car. I'm going to help him out. I was worried about being deported. Oh, well, you are. Me. Really? Yeah. Hey, why do you think we only brought two vehicles over? Ernie talked about this um, honey wine. Oh, I forget what you call it. Gruel. Mead. Mead gruel. What's the gruel? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to start. No, I was watching him, yeah. <laughs>